Warm greetings from TLM Academy. Today in this session, we will discuss about fire prevention and control. Before we begin, let me tell you about the key learnings for this session. At the end of this session, you will be able to understand what is fire and classes of fire, characteristics of fire, potential fire hazards, what is fire prevention, measures to be adopted for fire prevention, uses of fire extinguishers. and the last one is compatibility of extinguishers and fires so let us start our discussion and talk about fire and classes of fire a fire occurs when the elements which is heat fuel oxygen and chemical chain reaction are present and combined in the right mixture a fire can be prevented or extinguished by removing any one of the elements in the fire tetrahedron essentially all four elements must be present for fire to occur heat fuel oxygen and chemical chain reaction classes of fire class a fire involving solid materials such as wood paper or textiles class b fires involving flammable liquids such as petrol diesel or oils class c fires involving gases class d fires involving metals class e fires involving live electrical apparatus technically class e doesn't exist however this is used for convenience here class f fires involving cooking oils such as in deep fat fryers let us now discuss about the characteristics of fire in order to protect yourself from fire it is important to understand the basic characteristics of fire a fire has many characteristics and some of them are a fire can occur at any time short circuit is one of the leading causes of fire in just 2 minutes our residence can be engulfed in flames the water is the best medium to fight fires except electrical and oil fires most deaths due to fire occur at night when people are sleeping fire produces gases that make you drowsy smoke and poisonous gases are the primary killer in fires instead of being awakened by fire you may fall into a deeper sleep asphyxiation is the leading cause of fire deaths exceeding burns heat and smoke from fire can be more dangerous than the flames inhaling the super hot air can sear your lungs pouring water on electrical or oil fires will be dangerous We will now move forward and discuss about the potential fire hazards. The best measures to be adopted for the prevention of a fire are to eliminate potential fire hazards. Therefore, you need to know what fire hazards are and what you should do to remove them from your home or workplace. Some potential fire hazards are electric wiring in poor condition. electric system those are overloaded resulting in hot wiring or connections or field components storage of flammable liquids storage of combustibles with insufficient protection storage of combustibles near equipment that generate heat flame or sparks smoking of cigarettes cigars pipes beads etc ignition sources such as candles lighters matches etc equipment that generates heat and utilizes combustibles use of cooking appliances stoves furnaces boilers heaters ovens etc disregarding safety guidelines and the last one is poor housekeeping practices we now move forward and discuss about what is fire prevention fire prevention is the mechanism of designing and implementing procedures to reduce the risk of fire or reducing the damage if the fire does occur fire prevention systems are put in place so a building's fire load is as low as it can possibly be fire load is a term used by fire protection professionals to determine the potential severity of a fire in a building based on the presence of certain hazards essentially fire prevention reduces the likelihood of a serious fire by safely storing combustible materials and taking care of points of ignition such as heating system and plug sockets we are reducing the risk associated with fire 
We must always be vigilant of any potential fire hazards. A big part of this is carrying out regular fire safety inspections and risk assessments. However, fire prevention measures are mostly just common sense. We don't need to be trained fire safety technicians to know the dangers of smoking indoors or blocking fire exit. We do, however, need to be advised on any specific measures put in place to prevent fire in our building. This applies to both residential and commercial buildings. Let us now discuss about the measures to be adopted for fire prevention. A fire can occur at any time. Therefore, various measures are to be adopted in advance to prevent a fire in your building. Some of the measures need to be adopted are Prohibit smoking in storage areas of flammable materials. If electrical equipment is not working properly or if it gives off an unusual orders, disconnect the equipment and call the duty electricians. Properly replace any electrical cord that is cracked or has broken connection. When using extension cords, protect them from damage. Do hot put them across doorways or any place where they will be stepped on or chafed. Check the amperage load specified by the manufacturer. Do not plug an extension cord into another and do not plug more than one extension cord into one outlet. Keeps all heat producing appliances away from the wall and away from anything that might burn or spread fire. Leave plenty of space for air to circulate around equipment that normally gives off heat. Make sure all appliances in your area such as hot plates, ovens, toasters, mixtures, grinders, geysers, clothing irons are turned off when not in use. Use ashtrays and empty them only when you are sure the ashes, matches and buds are cold. Make sure that no one including visitors has left cigarettes smoldering in waste, baskets or on furniture, sofas, beds, etc. Keep storage areas, stay away landings and other out of way locations free of waste paper, empty cartoons, dirty racks and other material that could fuel a fire. Report all fire hazards to the Institute Security Fire Safety Wing. Create awareness to use fire retardant furniture, carpets, curtains, etc. Follow good housekeeping practices because a clean house is a safe house. Let us now discuss the use of fire extinguishers. Remove the fire extinguisher from its supporting bracket carefully. Extinguishers are surprisingly heavy. The lower handle on the valve will support the extinguisher when carried. Remove the pin from the handle by pulling the ring. Breaking the plastic tamper, evident seal. Aim the nozzle at the base of the flames, squeeze the handles together and sweep the nozzle slowly from side to side across the width of the flames until the fire. I sex to ingest or the extinguishers is empty. You may repeatedly start and stop the flow of the extinguisher by squeezing and releasing the top handle. If a fire is not successfully controlled with one extinguisher, you should leave immediately. Inform to the campus security and safety wing even if you successfully extinguish this fire. And finally, let us now discuss the compatibility of fire extinguisher. Dry chemical powder DCP extinguishers are safe and effective against all ordinary types of fire. Pressurized water extinguishers are effectively only against ordinary combustibles such as paper, wood, fabric, trash, etc. They must never be used on flammable liquid or oils fire or fire involving live electrical circuits. Carbon dioxide extinguishers shaped black nozzle. No pressure gauge work only against flammable liquids fires and are safe to use around live electrical circuits. They will not extinguish fires involving ordinary combustibles and must be charged within about 3 feet of flames to be effective. We have now come to the conclusion of this session. In case you have any questions regarding today's session, then please put them in the comment section of the video. 
See you soon till we meet next its best wishes from TNA Academy. Thank you.